Hi, I changed my mind about evil. I, I was wrong, and I'm gonna tell you why. Oh, and this won't be a comedy video. I'm sorry. <laughs> but I think it's more important than that. I used to think evil was just some abstract concept, mostly an exaggerated word, but I changed my mind. Now I think evil is very real. I think the presence of Satan in our world acting through corrupt humans is clear as day. And I think the past two years have made that incredibly clear. In fact, with what's going on in our world, I firmly believe it's spiritual warfare. Now, as dark as the evil is, I think there's absolutely something you and I can both do about it. And to be honest with you, I think that good has a much better shot at winning than evil does. And in this video, I'll tell you why I think that, and also share with you at the end of the video, five things that you can do to ensure evil is defeated and that good wins. But first, I think there's two types of people in this world. Those who see evil and those who are blind to it. And those who can see it can rise above it because they can see what they need to rise above. But those who can't see evil are not only more susceptible to being controlled by it, they probably will be without knowing it. That's why I decided to make this video, to help wake people up so they're not tricked into living in the dark nightmare of evil. Because evil doesn't look the way you'd expect it to. In our world, evil doesn't look evil, so you have to know how to spot it. More on that in a minute. Oh, in quick disclaimer before we go on. As I talk to you about good and evil, God versus Satan, I'm not a biblical scholar. My credentials and speaking on the topic are I'm a delusional redhead speaking to you based on my own free thought that I'm expressing through freedom of speech. Shall we go on? Great. Let me define evil for you. Evil, from my point of view, is anyone trying to control someone else in a way that's not in their best interest. Satan is all about control, and God is all about freedom. That's why God gives you free will, and Satan tries to get you to consent to enslavement. Now, with that working definition of evil, I know it's really hard to find evil people trying to control people in a way that's not in their best interest in our world today. Isn't it? Inject this into your body or you'll lose your job. Great, thank you for doing that. Now inject another one or you'll still lose your job. Stay home and don't see your friends and family. You better comply. Go ahead, little Johnny. Cut your junk off, it'll be good for you. You'll own nothing and be happy about it. How about a social credit score that determines what we allow you to do? Yeah, hard to spot any examples, but just Use your imagination if you have to. Recognize the deception. Evil doesn't look like evil. It looks like good. So evil doesn't show up the way you'd expect it to, like devil with horns or a guy wearing a dark hood, blood coming in his mouth and has a name tag on that says bad guy. People doing evil might be evil, but they're not stupid. So they know the dumbest way to trick you into doing their evil agenda is to have their evil agenda look like an evil agenda, because then they know you wouldn't do it. Tyrants don't show up saying, hey, we've got an evil agenda we'd like you to comply with. It's gonna be terrible. Now, would you like to participate? Evil always has deception and manipulation as part of it to make the bad thing look like a good thing. For example, this is for your protection, so it's good. Trust us. And if you don't trust us, you're a crazy, lunatic, racist, transphobe. Or it's got coercion laced into the deception as well. You better do this or else. And this is for your protection, okay? One of the dumbest assumptions that mostly people with blue hair make is that evil people are honest. You're being a conspiracy theorist. Klaus Schwab isn't evil. I'm pretty sure he is. So what, with his plan to help humanity by controlling every human on the planet, you think he's just lying? Yes. Making the assumption that evil people would be honest, I think comes from a noble place in people's hearts where they always try to see the best in humanity. It might surprise you, but evil people who are willing to kill men, women, and children are also willing to lie. Surprising, I know. <laughs> but lying is like the least sinful thing they do. There's a saying, the devil masquerades as an angel of light. 
That means people with evil agendas will attempt to deceive you by looking like a good guy that's on your side. So expecting evil to show up looking like a helping hand is probably a more accurate expectation than expecting evil to show up looking like evil. I think it's also one of the most powerful things you can do to fight evil. You're recognizing it. Evil controls the ignorant. Now, I believe that many people carrying out evil satanic agendas are doing so while having no clue that they're doing so. It's much like someone who's under mind control by the CIA or the KGB. If you ask them, hey, are you being controlled by the KGB? They would say, absolutely not. Are you nuts? That's because a poor form of controlling anyone is for them to know that you're controlling them. Because then they're better equipped to do something about it and free themselves from the control. So that means the best way to control someone is to have them to remain clueless that they're under your control. And it wouldn't surprise me if that's how the devil works. It's like if you sat down with Fauci and asked, are you doing the evil work of Satan? He'd probably say, no, and put on a mask. Well, I wouldn't put on a mask, but I'd believe him. I don't think he knows. I'm sure he knows he's deceiving people and committing crimes, but I seriously doubt he has any clue how much he's being used to carry out pure evil. Now, that's no excuse for a guy like that because he's the one allowing it to happen, so still put them behind bars. Why evildoers try to eliminate knowledge of God from our world. I'd like to share with you the Daily Wire reported on a Gallup poll that shows the belief in God has been dropping. 50 years ago, 98% of all people believe in God. But present day levels, the poll shows, just 81% of people believe in God. The poll also specifically showed that today, 94% of conservatives believe in God, while just 62% of liberals believe in God. I mean, all this story about Jesus rising from the dead and being the son of God, this is fake news. A passage where you say, looking at the world today, God seems to be making a comeback, but this is a mirage. God is dead. It just takes a while to get rid of the body. <laughs> Not hard to imagine why this is so lopsided as the left is implementing a very wicked agenda. For example, if you believe in God, then you can't really believe that God just mistakenly puts people in the wrong gender body. So we'll just get you to stop believing in God so that you'll believe that a lot of people are mistakenly born in the wrong gendered body. Let's just destroy a little objective God-based truth. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, when we do that, now we can control you. Now hear this, my friend. There's a reason why Satan-controlled people actively want to disconnect you from God. Ah, no, he's not evil. You've all Noah Harari from the World Economic Forum. Uh, he's a good guy. But I'm sure it's the other evil people that want you disconnected from God. That's because, for one, if you're connected to God, you'll be guided by his light not their darkness. But if you're disconnected from God, you won't be guided by God. Therefore, your obedience is a much easier target for them. It's kind of like if you stop eating healthy food, you're much more likely to be eating junk food. And two, if they get you to go blind to God, then you're also blind to Satan and therefore won't recognize their satanic ways and evil agendas. So getting you to not believe in God makes it easier for them to get you to buy in and participate in their evil agendas that they tell you are for your own good. Make sense? The evil sometimes looks insurmountable. I want to be honest with you. Sometimes when I look at the evil in the world and the power it has and the resources it has, sometimes I get forgetful for a few minutes and start to think like, Man, maybe good can't overcome this. They have trillions of dollars and they control the media, they control big tech, they even control a lot of our government. We can't compete with that. But then I remember, oh, they have all that, but we have God on our side. Evil has a lot of things you can measure in the material realm, but we have God. Cool. That kind of makes me sorry for the evil people because they've got nothing compared to what we have. Freedom wins and what you can do. Here's what I believe you and I and anyone can do to disempower evil and empower good. Know your principles and values and stand for them. Give me liberty or give me death. That's a principled statement. 
People who don't stand for anything will fall for anything, but people who know what they stand for will fall for nothing. So know your principles and values and compromise them for absolutely no one. Honor your heart and gut feelings, always. I think your heart and gut feelings are God directly communicating with you through your physiology. Don't see your friends and families and take this super untested injection it's for your protection. That doesn't quite feel right, does it? When evil shows up masquerading as the angel of light, something will feel off in your heart or gut. Honor that, even though most of the time it'll feel more uncomfortable to do so. Now, some people actually do know what they stand for and they know what their heart's telling them, but they lack the courage of the warrior spirit to stay true to themselves. But luckily, you and I get to learn from this mistake. So have the courage of the warrior spirit because the times we're living in call for it. Think for yourself. Outsourcing your thinking puts your thinking in the hands of someone else. And typically, good people don't wanna inject your mind with their ideas, because that's a violation. But evil people always carry syringes and are eager to inject your mind with their propaganda. They'd even like to mandate it. See the evil. You can't get out of a jail that you don't know you're in. And that means you can't get out of an evil influence that you can't recognize. So learn to see how evil shows up and trust what you're seeing for yourself. Stay aligned. The more you and I can allow our words and actions to stay in impeccable alignment with our heart and our own critical thinking, the more we're allowing ourselves to express the will of God. But letting your words and actions fall out of alignment with what your heart and own critical thinking says means you're not letting the will of God express through you. So unapologetically keep your words and actions impeccably aligned with your heart and critical thinking. That's it. Thank you for going on this journey with me about how and why I changed my mind about evil and how I think we're living in a time of spiritual warfare between God and Satan. And with the five things that I believe you and I can both do to empower good and therefore disempower evil, knowing your principles and values and standing for them, honoring your heart and gut feelings, thinking for yourself, seeing the evil and staying aligned. Please use any of them that resonate with you because I think if we both do our part, freedom wins. In fact, I know freedom wins because remember at the beginning how I said Satan's all about control and God's all about freedom? Well, we know freedom wins because freedom's God's way. What you and I get to do as proactive freedom lovers is accelerate the timeline in which freedom wins. So enjoy pissing on the dreams of tyrants with your liberty. Thank you for watching and thank you for being on Team Freedom with me. Stay free, my friend.